Good morning. I'm so glad you folks are here with us online and in person today. We have even more people here this morning, a little more than normal. Uh, gradually, we're trickling back, and we've got a wonderful bunch of folks who are online today and checking in. So welcome to all of you to St. Paul's United Church in Oakville, Ontario. Um, we are on lands of the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and we acknowledge their presence and their leadership and their um, striving over these years to hold stewardship of this place and work with us um, so we seek reconciliation and good relationship as we move forward with the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. I'm Carolyn Smith, and with Deborah Lafferette, we serve here with all of you folks and all of you folks online in this affirming, justice-seeking community, lighthearted and joyful and friendly here in Oakville, and we welcome you today. Um, this is our first anniversary. This is a wonderful celebration this morning, first anniversary of a strong and confident vote for becoming an affirming church of the United Church of Canada. You have to remember that a year ago, we were all online. We were all hunkered down in our homes, struggling with the lockdown, trying to figure out how to, what Zoom is, how to make it work. And we had 90 people join in on Zoom, figure out all of the tips and the tricks and the tools to join in for that vote. And it was a strong and confident vote to say that we are in a, a justice-seeking and affirming church. So this is our celebration today, and what a celebration it is. I'm glad you're here with us. There is room for all in this diverse and beautiful place and community that God has created with all of us. Speaking of that, we have a candle to light. I'm sure if you're at home, you might have a candle ready to go, and I'm going to light this one. as this rainbow candle flickers to light, flickers to life. The warmth and the peace of Christ go out to all of you in your diversity and all of your sparkle and all of your gifts as God has created you. And that peace and that warmth as each one of us opens up to God, we share out with one another in this community and out to the world that needs it so very much. And so I invite you to pray with me. Wide welcoming God from all the places and ways and paths we have come. Somehow we found our way here to sanctuary. With relief and affirming hope, we settle in your presence and hear you whisper to us, beloved. Hear our grateful praise for this wide circle of friends, new and old, learning and loving more for our Sabbath time with you. Strengthen us to widen the circle with a rainbow of justice and resounding voice. Together in body, mind, and spirit, we pray. Amen. And what do you want to do more right now than sing? even through your masks, and we can finally, and this is good news, 178, more voices, who is my mother? Today, we're going to hear the first 18 verses of Psalm 139, possibly one of my favorite passages in the Bible. When I hear or read Psalm 139, I hear a God who knows me who deeply knows me, who looks beyond my mask, and I'm not talking about the cloth one on my face, who looks beyond what I hide from others, who looks beyond the shameful secrets, the brokenness and the hurt, the trauma, and is with me, never abandoning me, despite my own feelings of inadequacy or being undeserving. No matter where I go in this world and no matter what I do, good or bad, this holy mystery, this all-encompassing spirit, this ever-present God will never abandon me and will always love me. 
One of the more famous phrases from this passage is, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I like to say, awesomely and wonderfully made. We are knitted in the womb, never far from the sacred, even, dare I say it, being sacred ourselves. As a Christian community, as a community of faith, we learn that this is how God loves us and that this is the love that needs to be shared with others. We turn away from the harmful messages of our world that tell us we are less loved based on the color of our skin, less loved based on our economic or immigration status, less loved because of our criminal record, less loved if we have sexual feelings toward the same gender, or if we discover that our body does not match our gender identity. These messages are fed to us by our culture. Sometimes we internalize them and feel shamed and unloved or put this shame and hate onto others. As Christians, it's our job to spread God's love to all people, combating these messages that make people feel less than others, less deserving, less accepted, less loved. As an affirming congregation, this is what we have committed to doing. Last year, we voted to become an affirming ministry and we voted to create this vision, a safe and inclusive faith community for people of all gender identities, sexual orientations, marital status, family configuration, abilities, ages, races, ethnicities, faiths, and socioeconomic circumstances, and that all may participate fully in all aspects of the life and work of our ministry, thereby enriching us all. In other words, that the love of God, as described in Psalm 139, that deeply knows us and loves us, wholly and completely, always and everywhere, be exactly what we share with others. We won't be perfect, and we will make mistakes. But as an affirming church, it means we will try. We will love all people, not despite what challenges us, but wholly and completely. Our mission is to determine how we do that, not just with those folks who walk in the doors, but all in our community. But that's enough for me. This morning, you're going to hear from four other people in our community who are going to share their thoughts on being an affirming church. You'll hear from the chair of our council, from one who has been a part of this community for many years, and one who joined us in the past year and a half, and one of our young people. So first, though, we're gonna hear from one of the co-chairs of our affirming team, who is in university in Vancouver, who is going to read for us the words of Psalm 139. Good morning, St. Paul's. Uh, I am excited to be doing one of the readings this morning from a surprisingly sunny Vancouver. Um, the reading I'm doing is Psalm 133, 1 to 18, I'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible. Yahweh, you've searched me and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. You read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate with all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue, Yahweh, before you know what it is. You hem me in before and behind, shielding me with your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, a height my mind cannot reach. Where could I run from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you'd be there. If I make my bed in death, you're always, you're already there. 
I could fly away with wings made of dawn or make my home on the far side of the sea. But even there, your hand will guide me. Your mighty hand holding me fast. If I say the darkness will hide me and night will be my only light. Even darkness won't be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created my inmost being and stitch me together in my parents' womb. For all these mis mysteries, I thank you. For the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works, my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you. While I was being made in that secret place, knitted together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my body, even there. All of my days were written in your book, all of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God. How impossible to number them. How I could no more count them than I could count the sand, but I suppose I could. You would still be with me. Hey everybody, it is your buddy Kent, and I'm coming to you as Chair of Council today. Uh, tomorrow, we recognize one year anniversary of becoming an affirming church. And I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone who did the work. Those on the committee for years who worked to get us to where we are now, and to everyone who came out and voted. I just wanna say thank you Thank you for making this church a church that I am proud to call my own. When the vote was going to happen, I called my son Cole, who lives in Ottawa and is a member of this church, to see if he wanted to participate in the vote. And he said, well, what's it about? And I said, well, we're trying to become uh, an affirming church, and it just means we're going to, you know, welcome everybody, depending on no, no matter what your orientation is. And it's a bit of a silence, and he says, uh, weren't you always? Isn't that what church is? And uh, I thought, okay, good. I did a good job with that one. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it, it's not. We're, we haven't walked a mile in someone else's shoes. And we can say we're welcoming, but if they don't feel welcomed, then we're not doing our job. So I want to say welcome to everyone. Everyone who's new and is joining us in this great journey, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And it is my hope that in the next decade that all United Churches will follow in our footsteps. Again, congratulations, St. Paul's. Let's keep moving forward. Hi, my name is Greg Smith. Most people don't know who I am, but my wife, Josette, and I began coming virtually to St. Paul's United late spring of this year. Our journey uh, towards St. Paul's is directly related to the celebration that you're, uh, we're experiencing today, the, uh, the fact of becoming an affirming church, because we wouldn't have found our way to you if, if it hadn't been for that choice. Uh, our daughter, um, Danica, uh, came out to us 10 years ago, and over the past 10 years, um, we have been slowly pulling away from the faith communities that we've been a part of because of a consistent unacceptance, uh, I call a love but approach to the LGBT community. We love you, but this is something that uh, we can't accept. It's, it, it, it struck us as something very un-Jesus, and as a result of that, our faith began to whittle. And um, as a result of that, we started attending a church in Boston that was an affirming church because we thought there were none in this area. Uh, as we began to search further, a friend of ours passed on an article in the Oakville Beaver about a church that had become affirming and the thoughtfulness and the preparation and the inclusiveness of that process 
uh, St. Paul's United uh, resulted in us beginning to attend first virtually and then hopefully in the future we'll be able to attend uh, in person and become more involved in it. So we just wanted to share our gratefulness for this community's decision, um, hopefully our new community's decision to open up your doors, uh, to be affirming, to send a message that Jesus is about love and acceptance. And uh, we are so grateful that we are having uh, to found a church that is local, that our daughter can attend, that our son and his girlfriend can attend as well. Um, a, a place where Jesus and the love of Jesus really shines bright. So thank you for uh, renewing our faith um, uh, finding another community and finding a place where our whole family can attend and continue to grow in our faith. Thank you and congratulations St. Paul's on one year uh, as an affirming community. Good morning St. Paul's. I am Jay Smith. And I'm still Jeff Opera. And we are proof that you, uh, St. Paul's United is affirming because you have let us do this for 20 months <laughs> and not many places would. You really, you really do welcome all. Um, we are evident. You know, Jay, I don't mean to get too meta on you, okay? But I'm watching the video, and I'm hearing Catherine, okay? But then I look out, and I'm seeing Catherine. And I'm not sure how this, this works. I'm a little confused. Me too, because she's not, you know, you can't see her singing, but it's you coming can. from it's everywhere. Coming I don't know how this is working. It's, it's like the, the best ventriloquism ever. Yeah. Wow. And, and she's laughing, which is kind of nice. It is, absolutely. And it is coming up on the liturgical season of Advent. We love saying that, just so you know. Liturgical season of Advent, that's next week. Yep. That is, uh, so we're going to be lighting the candles again and uh, really looking to celebrate for people both online and in person. Yeah, there'll be uh, families and the pubs and pews guys, and we'll all be uh, lighting some candles, so it'll be fun. Uh, the Affirm event. Which was confirmed. Is, it was confirmed. Now uh, it's postponed. Well, yeah, so now we have to firm up a date for the affirming event. Yeah, and, and that will be affirmed at some point. And we'll confirm it with you. Yeah. So that will be very soon. Uh, and it's because they had so many people that wanted to join, but not everybody could make it for uh, today. So it will be coming up soon. And... Uh, we're looking forward to having everybody online and seeing their faces. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and then Carol is coming to sing. Carol is coming. Oh, and, and I can't wait to hear Harold the angel sing. Yes. Hark the Herald. <laughs> and it's awesome because he's even here to I hear I know, it. it's really great. Although I have to laugh that Judy's leaning over to explain it to him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know who Carol is, but she's coming to sing. She is coming to sing. So we are having a Carol sing on December twelfth at three p.m. and we're asking you to register. So just so we know, we have enough uh, registered if you're coming in person, and it's going to be both in person and online. So again, again, Catherine will be everywhere. Catherine is everywhere, um, and and I just I just want to acknowledge that the hybrid service is uh, uh, here to stay, and and that. You know, for the people who are online right now, we do value you. We are, uh, I've been on my uh, uh, little phone on the uh, yeah. interweb uh, watching it as well and, and communicating. It's been great to have this community come together. So we don't want the people online to think that you're not valued. We think you're wonderful. And it's proof that you can do two things at once. Well, I couldn't chew gum. That no. would be confusing. And at the back of the sanctuary today in the narthex, we have something that's pretty amazing. It is. Um, so if we, all of y'all remember, um, uh, thank you, Bert, for the picture. Um, so we asked for donations and uh, of books themselves and or money to buy books. And these are all books that were bought um, to speak around inclusion, racism, affirming, environmentalism, and books that people can have access to the library. I can't say how proud we are for how many, so please take a look. Um, uh, when you're heading out, certainly take a look now. These are all available to people, and you can check them out and literally check them out like a library, right? So you can check them out as you walk by, and then you can actually check them out too. So really encourage you. I have to tell you, Jay and I were a little bit disappointed because there's no actual pop-up 
books. That's what we were asking for, but uh, maybe next year we'll find in the budget. And I'm sure that if you look in the newsletter next week, there'll be information about it. You know what? Who writes the newsletter? I think it's Candy. Oh, you know what? Where Jay and I are actually trying to uh, create a uh, we're, petition we're, yeah. that for Advent, we change the name of uh, the newsletter to the Christmas Candy Gram. See? Oh, it's See, look at yeah, this. there you go. It's happening. Candy Gram. Candy Gram. So, uh, let, let's just say that there's a certain joy in doing the announcements because we can do it up here and people clap. It's great. Yeah, except we're going to go back there later. Oh, and, and she, and, yeah, she's not going to be very it's happy. Be bad. With that, St. Paul's, thank you very much for being here, for being online. Um, continue to be kind, continue to care, and uh, know that uh, uh, Jay and I haven't mentioned it today, but um, it is still Movember. It is still Men's Mental Health Month and, and Men's Health Month. And uh, please make sure that you have an opportunity to talk to someone if you need to. Uh, Jay and I are always available. Yes, we're goofy. Yes, we're silly. But we also uh, take this very seriously. So yeah. if there's any way that we or anyone else can help, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, see you later, St. Paul's. And I'll just offer one more thing. Um, we, we just finished a book study on Catherine Hayhoe's book, Saving Us. And some of you are here with us on Thursday night watching her on the screen as she offered her words of wisdom and answered questions. And some of you even watched it from home. So it was a great study. The book is now in the library. So uh, if you're looking for, if you would like to read it, it is in the library. I've got a copy in my office as well. Um, starting this Wednesday, though, we're going to start up a new Advent study. Um, it's based on a, a poem, actually. It's based on a poem called The Midwife Story by Nancy Reeves. Um, it's not a long poem. It's fairly short. And basically, we just split it up into four um, stanzas of the poem, and we come together and we talk about it. So um, I've got fo five photocopies here with me this morning, and two are already spoken for. So if you're interested in joining us, just let me know. This is also a time when we give thanks for all the people in our community who give what they can, whether it's financially or with their time or with their gifts. And we are so appreciative for all those who are able to be a part of this community and to offer what they do. Um, so I'm just going to offer up a prayer for that. Oh God, receive our offerings, given in the spirit of good cheer and thankfulness. Bless our offerings, those put into the plate, those offered by par, those put into the mail, those offered with our hands and our feet. And may they all be used to help people in need, and may all who receive know that you are with them. Amen. In the late 1600s, John Locke formulated a theory of human development called tabula rasa. This basically stated that a baby was born as a blank slate, believing that all individuals are born without built-in context and all knowledge comes from experience and perception. Thus was born the great nature versus nurture debate. When I started graduate school in the early 1970s, neuropsychology, an area involving the fusion of biology and psychology, was a fairly young science. But over the years, researchers have learned much about how our appearance, our thoughts and beliefs, our behaviors, our gender and sexual preferences are expressions of our biology and our genetic code. Just like snowflakes, each of us arrives on this earth already uniquely made and not a blank slate. 
more importantly, in the United Church of Canada, we believe that each individual is not only uniquely made, but also that we are made in God's image. If this is a faith that we profess, how then do we live it? I believe we live it when we welcome everyone who wishes to enter our doors. We help everyone to find a home within our walls, our community, and our hearts. We recognize injustice where and when it occurs. We work for justice because as the saying goes, we are the hands and feet of God. St. Paul's has chosen to be this type of welcoming, justice-seeking church community. I have had experience in religious denominations where barriers are in place to separate people rather than bring them together. I am very happy that my church, St. Paul's, has chosen to be a church that affirms God's love for all. Good morning. I'm Bev Phillips, and I'm a member of the family of St. Paul's. On this celebratory morning, I am honored to be leading you in the prayers of the people. As the frosty winds of November whistle through the trees and herald the coming winter, let us still our minds and listen for God. Let us pray. Compassionate God, we come to you this morning with a mixture of emotions. For many of us, there is a sense of anxiety and concern. All around the world, we are witnessing weather changes that are unprecedented in past history. We think particularly of the province of British Columbia, whose inhabitants over the past year have endured record-breaking temperatures, uncontrolled wildfires, and now intense prolonged rainfall, which has led to massive destructive flooding. At the same time, many parts of Canada and many nations around the world face extreme and locally exceptional drought conditions. Be with all those whose lives and livelihoods are affected by our changing climate. Guide us in the role that we play in these evolving times. Give us the strength and the courage to take action and to talk to others about the changes in our climate which are caused by human actions. Inspire each of us to continue to seek out new ways of living that will help us to have a part in creating a healthier environment for everyone. In spite of our concerns, loving God, we come to you on this special morning with a spirit of gratitude. We are grateful for the community of St. Paul's and for those whose leadership has led us to becoming an affirming congregation. We are thankful for our expanded understanding and all we have learned on this journey. We have become even more aware of the challenges many people face. We have endeavored to welcome everyone into our midst and have been enriched by their presence. We are blessed that we have the support of those around us as we further seek to spread your unconditional love to all people, just as you have loved us. In a world where opinions are becoming more polarized than ever before, help us to continue to build bridges of understanding and acceptance that all may know your ever-present love. Faithful God, help us to always remember that wherever you are, sorry, that wherever we are, you are there. That no matter what happens, you will never abandon us and that you will always love us. In thankfulness, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God who is in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, I'm Lyndon, and I'm a queer member of St. Paul's United Church. As a queer person, a lot of times when I'm in churches or when I'm at religious uh, places, I don't always feel completely welcome because though there are many affirming churches, not everyone is affirming and not everyone is supportive of me and my sexuality. But St. Paul's has always been that place for me. I've always known that they would affirm me and support me no matter what I identify as and who I love, but there was still that shadow of a doubt that there were people who didn't support me in the church. And it was really hard because I would be going to church and I would feel this connection to God that I loved, but then it would feel like the church wasn't fully my place. And so a year ago, when we fully decided to become an affirming church and we passed the vote that St. Paul's would officially be affirmed, it was kind of like a weight lifted off of my shoulders, just being like, oh, there is a place where I can go as a queer person to celebrate God and to practice my faith uh, without being judged and without being told that I'm not supposed to be there, told that I, God doesn't love me because of who I am. And it has been a little bit life-changing just seeing the support, overwhelming support that has come from St. Paul's being affirming. So that is why St. Paul's being affirmed a year ago uh, was important to me. Uh, thank you. So I just want to say thank you to Kent and Greg and Pat and Lyndon for sharing those reflections with us this morning. I think they were all very deeply meaningful. Today is the Sunday before Advent. It's, when you look at a church calendar, it's the last Sunday on the church calendar. And it's typically, typically called Christ the King Sunday or... Um, Reign of Christ Sunday. So we're going to sing a traditional, we're going to finish with a traditional song called Rejoice the Lord is King, and it's number 213 in your voices united. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and joy. 
Please be seated. So, um, right after worship, we will um, be, you are allowed to gather inside the building. Um, the, we've come to a point in our restrictions where as long as we are masked, we can uh, socially gather. Um, but if you're not comfortable, please, that's okay. You can, you can uh, walk out the doors. We can also, I mean, it's nice enough we can also gather outside. Um, we're also going to put on Zoom right away so that those at home can join us as well. So if you'd like to come up here, you can, you can talk to those people who might be on the screen. So beautiful display up here for our Affirming Sunday. Thank you, Carolyn, for doing that for us this morning. And next Sunday, there'll be a whole different display with our lights and wreaths and greenery. So um, I'm excited for Advent to start next Sunday. My friends, you are all awesomely and wonderfully made. May you feel the whole and holy love of God. May you learn to love from Christ's example. And may the Spirit move you to share that love with all people. Go into the world knowing you are loved for all that you are. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat>